How you guys doing today? Why don't you give me something? Give me a, a one or something in the comments. Go ahead and say something. You said all right to my starting soon, Michael. So I, I know you can see the screen and at least uh, the display, but can you say something if you can hear me? Awesome. What's up, Brian? How you doing? Jennifer? That's awesome, Michael. Glad to have uh, some, some familiar faces on here. I see people popping in. I'm watching the other screen myself. I have I usually open these live feeds up on my uh, on another screen on my computer and then on my phone so that I have it in a few different places so that um, if you guys don't if I miss you guys saying that there's something wrong, hopefully I'll catch it in one of the other screens. Great. So today we're gonna talk about how to pack more product value into promotions to make them more compelling. Get rid of that highlight. I can't use PowerPoint the, the normal way by going through the slides on this computer while I'm running a live feed because it kind of messes everything up. So uh, you guys get to see ahead what we're looking at, that's fine. But we're gonna talk about how to pack more product value into promotions to make them more compelling or to pack how to pack more value into product promotions to make them more compelling. I've had these slides for a while. I've went through this presentation several times. It's one of my uh, favorites to go through just because I think that there's just so much here, um, a lot that people miss. And um, you know, I just wanna give you a different way of thinking about how to have more value in all of your product promotions so that you could one, make more money. I mean, that's the, the end goal. But two, it's gonna offer more value to your customers. It's gonna make your customers feel more compelled to purchase from you, okay? And so I get asked all the time and I, go, and I say the same answer every single time. People ask me, what is the number one way to increase your conversion rate? And I say the same thing every single time. The number one way to increase your conversion rate is to add more value. Add more value to your campaigns, add more value to uh, the, the entire sales process, let your customers see more value at each step, and that's how you're gonna increase your conversion rate. Okay, it's that, it's that simple. I tell a story all the time of, um, well, I, I don't even have to tell a story. We could just talk about our own lives. I think we've all done this, where we've walked through a store, we go into a store to go buy something, and something else grabs our attention as we're walking through the store, and we pick it up, and uh, you know we're, we continue to walk through the store and we might not find what we're there looking for so we go ahead and put the item down and leave without buying the item that we found that while we were walking around if that makes sense okay uh, an example of that is when Rita and I we went to have uh, we were having a baby we have a baby now that's almost three months old um, but while she was pregnant we were looking for baby items and and we were looking for like strollers or, or cribs or something like that I don't remember um, big items and we were walking through department stores and and going through different stores trying to find the right item and just checking out different ones and that, at one store she found this baby onesie and I don't remember what it said I always said it said something like I have the world's favorite dad or something like that but um, or the best dad but I, I guess I'm kind of biased with that one um, but she picked up this onesie and, and, and Rita was like oh this is so cute we need to have this I need to buy this um, and then we were there looking around we continued to walk around looking for whatever it was that we were looking for and we ended up leaving without finding anything. She put the onesie down, ended up not buying it. And uh, that's an example of exactly what happens when people come to our Shopify stores. They, they come to our store and they don't have any intention or when they first see our ad, they had no intention of shopping, right? They were there uh, stalking people. They were there looking at photos. They were there trying to find something inspirational. Whatever they were doing on Facebook, uh, it was not shopping, okay? That's not what their intention was uh, if they're seeing your ad in their newsfeed. And so you're trying to, ca trying to catch them, trying to stop them in their tracks to get them to buy a product from you out of nowhere. And so you need to really be compelling to them, right? They might see your product, they might like it, you might add it to cart just like Rita picked it up and said, I need to have this. Um, but if, if you don't have enough value there, if you don't give them a reason to purchase, to really go through with that purchase, they're just gonna put, that, put it aside and leave and not buy, they're gonna abandon their cart because that's not what their intention was in the first place. They were just saying, I like this by adding it to their cart, okay? And so we want them to purchase, we want them to continue to, to continue all the way through through, uh, through the purchase process, through the sales process, all the way through checkout, and to actually make the purchase, makes money, right? 
So the way to do that is to add more value. If Rita would have found that second product, if she would have found the stroller, she would have bought that, that onesie. 100% sure she would have bought it. She wouldn't have put it down and say, oh, no, I don't need it no more. I, I, I don't want it anymore. She would have bought it if she had bought the stroller, if we would have found whatever it was we were there looking for, right? And I think we've all done that before. I, I've done it before where, uh, you know, it could, it could vouch for that. that. That's true, that if you don't have enough reason, enough uh, compelling reason, you're just not going to buy it. Right. And the, and so, um, you know, that seems simple. That seems obvious. Um, but it's not so obvious when people are asking, why aren't people buying from me? Why aren't people buying from my store? Well, it's because you don't have enough value there. OK, so we're going to talk about adding value. We're going to talk about packing value, stacking value and uh, just really making your customer feel that they're getting um, getting something out of the purchase. And there's a bunch of different ways to do that. Um, I'm going to talk about five different types of product promotions that I use most. This list, I, there's five right here, but this list could go on forever. I, I mean, just my own. I mean, I could do dozens probably different ways I've angled my promotions, but I've tried to break them down into um, general categories to kind of give you a blueprint to follow. Because some of us have magic hands, some, or some of you have magic hands, not me, to be able to go out there and find, just know right away the perfect upsell. Sometimes they come to me and sometimes they don't. But other times you have to discover what the perfect upsell is. You have to do some research, you have to do um, some testing and some thinking about it to find out what the perfect upsell is or what the perfect bundle is. And that's kind of what all of this is, is about, how to pack more uh, value into these promotions with bundles and upsell offers. And so these, different, these five different types of bundles or upsell offers are what I call product promotions. These five different types of product promotions are just gonna give you a blueprint, so something that you could think about when looking for that upsell or that bundle. Okay, so we're gonna run through these five different types of promotions. Like I said, there's a lot more, but these are the five to get you started thinking. And then I'm gonna show you in the end how to actually set some of these up. Sound good to everybody? Put something in the comments if you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever uh, walked into a, a store and said, ooh, I want this, and then ended up walking out the store without buying it. Or if you've ever went to uh, impulsively add something to cart on an online store and didn't end up buying it. Uh, I, I think we've all done that in some way at some point in our life if we've ever spent money. Okay, and so um, you know what would have what would have made me gone through with that conversion if I is if I was just like so compelled I couldn't resist, right? Like I was just like wow, there's so much value there. So for the perfect example, I use this as a perfect example. I like to drink energy drinks. That's how I stay running 20 hours a day, right? That's how I stay, stay moving. Uh, but I, I usually stop by this gas station by my, by my office and I'll pick up an energy drink, but on the way to the office. At least I used to pick up an energy drink. Now I pick up three of them, right? Every time I would buy one, they used to ask me, you want two, you get two for five, right? You can get two for five, you can get two for five. Every time I would walk in and get one and I would always turn it down. And then one day they said, hey, you can get three for five, and it caught me. I was like, wow, that's some value right there. And I've been buying three ever since. Every time I go in there now, I buy three of them because they got me with that value. It was just the right offer. It was just waiting for the right offer, right? Now they went from, they went from making less money per, per or yeah, less money per purchase, but they're getting a hell of a lot more purchases from me, okay? And so that's key. That's, that's what this is all about. That's what this stuff that we're gonna talk about today is all about. It's about how compelling can your offer be? And I talk about three different types or three different P's. I talk about the three different P's, uh, the people, the product, and, to, and the promotion. The, this is the promotion. It, it, there is overlap there. There's, it's, it's a little bit about the product as well, but this is mostly about the promotion. How you're ang angling that front end offer to get your customers to buy. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the same product promotion. So let's look at that slide. A same product promotion is something like this. You have a hunting knife that you're selling for $10, and now you're giving them the option to buy three of them for $19. Right? Say your cost on this hunting knife is uh, $3. You're making, you're, you're making uh, $7 a piece. I'm turn off my ringer on my phone. Uh, $7 a piece on this uh, front end offer or on that offer. You know, if they were just going to buy one of them, you, you would get $7 a piece. If you're buying them from three and selling for 10, you're making $7. But you might only have a, um, I don't know, just a 1% conversion rate on that because people don't, they're not as compelled 
to buy it. And then you're offering three for 19. So say, so, so let's just lay out a scenario. Somebody comes to your, or, or they're, they're scrolling through their newsfeed on Facebook. Actually, you can't do that with this, this ad or this product because it's, um, you can't sell knives on Facebook, but let's just say this was something else. They're scrolling through their newsfeed and they see this front product. They're interested in it. They engage with it, right? They click the ad, they click over to your website. They're engaging with it. They show that they are interested. In my three Ps, you've, you've uh, connected or if you've, you've established, I guess, the people and the product, right? Because they've engaged with that ad. You've interested them with that ad. So you've, you've established the, a relationship between a people and a product. The only thing that you need to change now, if you need to change anything, is the promotion. You've already established that they like it by them clicking the ad and heading on over to the website, as long as you don't have some fake uh, clickbait on there. You know, if you've got fake clickbait on there, then, then just throw that rule out the window. But if you're authentically showing a product ad and they click over onto your website, you know that they're genuinely interested in it. And so uh, the only thing, if they're not buying, the only thing you got to do is tweak the promotion. And so maybe if they're not buying or, or not as much people as you need to be are buying at uh, $10 a piece, well, maybe they will buy three of them at $19 a piece. Now, remember, if this is $3 a piece for you, and you're, they're give, you're giving three for 19, that means you're making $10 profit. Now, if you think about it, you might think, well, that's crazy. I was making $7 profit over with one. Why would I want to go down to $10 profit for three of them? It doesn't make sense. Well, because it's going to increase your conversion rate by having more value to your customer. Now, if you think about it this way, was it more orders? Was it less? What was it more orders, less orders, or the same amount of orders? Like, was it, was it one customer that you're dealing with, one purchase that you're dealing with? One transaction? Yeah, it's one transaction. So it doesn't matter how many pieces it is. Is it ma What matters is how much you've made during that transaction. And you went from $7 profit to $10 profit in that transaction, right? You've made more money by adding more value for your customer. They went from paying $10 a piece to paying, what is that, eight, eight, uh, six something a piece? Right? So you've added a lot more value to your customers, from your customer's perspective, but you're making more money per order, per purchase, right? Your AOV, average order value, it's gone up by $3. Does that make sense, you guys? That, that, that's, that is the power of changing your promotion. It also gives you, you know what it also gives you? It also gives you more margins for ads. This one you had $7 until you were losing money or break, break even. This one you had uh, $10 before your break even. So it gives you more money that you could spend, right? So adding value to your campaigns isn't losing money. A lot of people think you're losing money. No, it's not losing money. You're making more money by adding more value to your campaigns. And this should be, I, I hope that for somebody, I hope somewhere somebody that this was a, uh, that this was a uh, aha, aha moment. Okay, where you understand how adding value, how stacking value can make you more money, can, can increase your conversion rate, can make more happy customers, right? Yeah, Mike, it, it aids in training Pixel. Any, any, any way that you get more sales will aid in training your Pixel and in, 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 uh, optimizing your Pixel. Any way you get any type of actions on your website. Yep, and this is not just for repeat customers, Michael. This isn't just come, getting them to come back and buy more. I'm going to show you at the end of this webinar, toward the end of this live, I'm going to show you uh, how to actually set up these different offers, and I think I'm going to show you three different ways. Because this is not, remember, this is the sales process. So they imagine them scrolling through their Facebook news feed. They see this product. It stands out. They know that they're going to get, you know, they only see one of them there. They're like, oh, that's cool. I like it. Let me learn more about it. I'm interested in it. Click. They click over to your website, and uh, they see that they get one for 10, and they're like, huh, that's interesting. Add it to cart just for the heck of it because you have a big green button that looks enticing, so they do it. Um, and so uh, that's where their mind is at. That's typically where their mind ends. That's typically where 98% of the people that come to your website leave is at that point. And so what we're trying to do is giving, we're trying to give them more value. So somewhere on, their, on that sales page, on your, on your product page, when they see the one for $10, you want them to also see three for $19, right? If you're dealing with the same product type of promotion. Remember, this is just the one type of promotion, the same product promotion. 
right? So uh, you could buy one of them for $10 or you could buy three of them for 19. Now you, what you've done is you, you've added more value at this second step that you didn't have at the first step. At the first step was the ad. When they're seeing your ad, they just seen the one knife and they're like, cool, I want that. Let me learn more about it. When they get to step two, which is the product page, they're like, whoa, I could get three of them for, for $19 right now when one of them only usually costs 10. I'm saving $11. I'm you know, this is, this is so awesome, right? Or whatever, right? You're stacking value at that next step, right? And so uh, this is how you're gonna stack. This, this is exactly how you stack value. That's just one step. You're gonna, you're gonna do it on your product page and you're gonna do it with the same product promotion. I'm going to show you guys how to do that here a little bit later on. Right now, I just want you to look for the, or to understand that this is a same product promotion. And so when you're looking for upsells to your product, you th you're thinking, okay, can I sell them more of this same type of product? Right? You're looking, it, some products you just can't sell, sell, send them, you can't sell them more of. Right? Think of like a car stereo. It's the example I use a lot on this uh, is a car stereo. You, typically, a person's only going to buy one car stereo. Maybe they'll buy two. You know, they'll buy one for their spouse or their partner or whatever. Right? But typically, they'll only buy one if they're going to buy it, especially impulsively. Right? But a throwing knife, they'll buy multiple. Another example is uh, I'll, pull, I'll pull it up. This is a, this is a funnel that went, um, was all over the internet. And you guys might have seen it. Let me pull up in this other page and I'll bring it over. You guys might have seen it before. It's called Fiber Fix, right? I went through the funnel and I bought it just to, to uh, see what it's all about. And this is Fiber Fix and it's a hilarious video. So go ahead and watch it. Go to fiberfix.com and um, check it out if you haven't already seen it. But basically, uh, they have this duct tape stuff. Actually, this is a new product. Interesting. They got this new little welding product thing right here. Um, I think it was Fiber Fix Now was the was the um, original one that I want to show you guys. Yeah, so they got this cast type tape, right? You, it's like duct tape, but it's like everlasting. Actually, this is the same page. It went to the same one. Uh, but this is it over here, this tape right here. Now, when you go through the original funnel, you're gonna get offered like 50 packs of this stuff. By the time you're, by the time you're done, they're offering you so much that it's, it's insane. You got like a lifetime supply of this stuff. Okay, and this is a perfect example of something that could be used, at least for this niche, could be used over and over and over again, right? So I just wanted to give you that one as an example of a product that can be used over and over. It's the same type of product, uh, it's just like this throwing knife. Throwing knives are, are often sold in sets of five or ten or something like that. So it's the same type of product. That offer will work for this type of product. It won't work for every product, like a car stereo, right? or like a, a kid stroller, like a baby stroller, right? You only typically need one. If you need two, you might as well buy the one that comes with two seats, right? So some items uh, you could run a, a same product promotion on and some of them you can't. And so I want you guys to think about that just as one type of product promotion that you could be doing um, you know, with your campaigns, the campaigns that you have going on right now. Okay, and then the next one is Variation product. I just changed that a minute ago or a little while ago before this webinar. It used to say, uh, I think, similar product and I had variant product or something. I, I change this every time to kind of um, accommodate how I'm feeling that day because I really don't know how to explain this one other than it's, a, it's another type, it's another product that's very similar to the original one. Now, this is one example of what I mean by that. You're going from a, a throwing knife to a, or a, a military style, I guess, throwing knife to a, a different type of leather. I don't know what this type would be. Uh, both kind of tactical, I guess, maybe. Right, so they're, they're a variation product. You have, uh, you could, they could buy this product or they could buy this product or they could buy both products, right? Another example that isn't as uh, different or as extreme as this one would be like a t-shirt, right? Maybe they want a t-shirt in uh, different colors or maybe they want a t-shirt and a hoodie, right? That's a variation product, they're kind of the same. All right, now a little bit more extreme would be something like a t-shirt, um, something we're doing right now actually. Uh, we're selling a mug that has a saying on it and in the comments we have a bunch of people that are saying, I already have the t-shirt, I might as well get the mug, right? 
that's how people feel. If they're if people are buying a T-shirt that has a saying on it or has a certain design on it, if they're buying that impulsively online and you've already sold it to them, we should take that design and put it on other products and sell it to them. Those are uh, variation products. You're, you're um, really staying in line with the original product. Okay. So do you guys see the difference? Put a one in the in the comments if you guys see the difference between the same product promotion, the same same type of product promotion where you're offering them a, not one knife or multiple of the same knife versus a variant product promotion where you're offering them, say as an example, this one green knife and now you offer them a black knife, right? That's a variation or a variant product offer. Now those seem obvious. When you see that, you're like, duh, it's a variant. It makes sense. Yeah. But what I want you guys to get from this is, is when you're looking for something to sell with your products, when you're looking for some sort of bundle product or some sell, sort of upsell product or, or something like that, when you're looking for one and you don't know what to do, what, what type of offer to have, what, to, what, what product should you look for? What do you add to it? Sometimes we just don't know. Right? Well, I want you to look at these five different product offers that we're going to go over. We already went over two of them. And I want you to think about, okay, well, can I use this, the same type of product? Can I, can I, you know, is it something that people buy multiple of? If yes, then do that. Start there. If no, then we'll move on to the next one. Well, is there, is there a variation? Can I offer them something very similar to it? Right? And then move down that list. That's what, I'm going, that's what I want you guys to get from this, this live right here is to understand that there's a bunch of different types of offers. And if you could just start with these five and, and just cycle through these and use these, start with these, you could find a lot, you could really pack a lot of value and find a lot of products that you could add to your campaigns and make a lot more money. But you have to understand the difference between them. If you don't understand the difference between them, then all of it doesn't make, none of it's gonna make sense. Okay, but you guys gave me a bunch of ones so you guys see it. Um, somebody saying, I tried the main app in the store, all the code alterations messed up, messed up the other apps and so you deleted it. Yeah, you have to be careful. Um, yeah, there are other apps. Um, I might suggest one or two later on. How do you create these bundles? I'm going to show you guys that. I'm going to show you guys that here in a little bit. Okay. All right. Awesome. So uh, that's a variation product that I'm not going to beat each one of these. I'm not going to drill in on each one of these. I just want to make sure that you understand each one. And so now let's move on to a companion product. A companion product is a product that goes with the original product, but is intended to be used with the, in the original product. Okay? Now there's overlap here. There is some overlap here. Like a bundle of throwing knives can be a, a companion product because you might want to take them as a set, right? But that's not really how we've classified it. Okay, um, there, sometimes, sometimes variation products will overlap with companion products. Sometimes companion products will, will overlap with, with uh, interest products. And sometimes they'll, all over, they'll overlap, you know, overlap with all of them. Well, I don't know about all of them, but you, know, you have a lot of overlap. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is, is when you're looking for types of offers, these are the types of offers that you should be starting with. Okay, so a companion product is a product that goes with the original product and it has a use. Now the difference, uh, one, one key thing that I want you to understand that's different about a companion product, uh, that's different from these other two, these are based on the product. The first two, the same product and the vari variation product, those are based on the product, right? This one, you're gonna take the first product and, and upsell more of the same product, right? It doesn't have any, uh, you know, you're not concerned about the user at this point or the customer at this point, you're just concerned about the product. You're gonna take one, you know, you're offering them one, now you're offering them three. The same thing with this one. You're, you were offering them this knife, now you're offering them this knife. It, you know, if they were interested in this, then they're probably interested in that. If they like this, if they like the picture of it, then they're probably gonna like the picture of the other one, right? So there's, uh, you're, you're um, basing the upsell on the product itself. The companion product does, it is based off of the product itself, but is also based on the use of the product by the buyer. And that's, that's important because you're adding in a layer of psychology. Whenever you bring in the buyer, whenever you're bringing in the customer, the prospect, 
when you're ever you're bringing in their decision then you have to consider that it's psychology. Even that, that's what even this is, it's psychology, but yet you're, you're focusing on the product side of things. This, this one is psychology, but you're focusing on the, 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 the uh, product side of things. This one is psychology, but you're focusing on the user side of things. You're saying, you're, you're saying hey, you wanna, you're going out into the woods, carry this knife with you. If they just have it like this, what are they gonna do? Just carry it in their hand and, and you know, walk around with it all day long? If they have the sheath to put it in, then you're recognizing that they could actually carry this around with them on their adventures, right? And that allows you to appeal to the customer a little bit more. So imagine again, you have a sales process where the person is stro stro scrolling through their newsfeed and um, they see the picture of the knife and they decide that they click over to their website and they, they see um, multiple knives and they're like, heck yeah, I want multiple knives. They throw it into their cart, they get over to the cart page and they see that they could get a three pack of sheaths with it as well that connects to like a, um, a belt, right? So now they could carry all three of them connected to their hip, right? I'm just showing the sheath here, but you know, let's just add, make it a bundle. What just happened was that you just created another step of value where you're stacking more value and your customer is getting more inclined to purchase and less resistant. Because at step one was the ad where they seen the ad and they, and they resonated with the picture or the, picture, the, the product, the product resonated with them and they, they said, I like this. They went over to the, the product page. They seen that they, got, they could get a lot of value by getting three of them. So they're like, heck yeah, I want that. So they add it to their cart. When they get to their cart page, they say they see that they could get sheets and the sheets are a good deal and it, and it reminds them of that they're going out adventuring they're gonna be out in the wild they don't want to carry these uh you know with in their hands and they could carry them hands free by connecting on the sheath or, or getting the sheath and, and so uh you've added another layer of value and you've compelled your customer a little bit more you've pushed them a little bit closer to purchase do you guys see that does that make sense to you guys that that's what would happen if you did this if you if you guided your customer if you led them if you know if you didn't leave it up to them to go find out uh, how to add more products to cart and how to how to um, you know, find all of these other items on your store. If you let them through a sales process, step by step, that's why funnels are important or, or can be useful, but that's a little bit advanced now. Just stick to Shopify. Um, but if you could lead them through each step, do you guys agree that that would increase your conversion rate? You've, if you've added value at each step the way we've just shown? I, I think it would. Even if it was, it was just by 1%. Even if it was just by 1%, I think that would be enough. Okay? So, um, I'm gonna go through these, look at questions and make sure I'm not missing anything from any of you guys. Awesome. So, so far we've looked at same product where you just offer, you either offer them one or you offer them a multiple of that product. It doesn't have to be three. Depending on what it is, you might offer them, you know, one, you might offer them two, you might offer them one, two, you might offer them one, two, three, you might offer them one, two, three, six, or one, two, three, six, 12, 24. Like you, you could set it up however you want, right? I'm just showing you that the idea is, is if it's something that you're gonna, that they'll buy one of and they'll buy multiple of, well, offer them multiple. Don't just get stuck at offering them one. Offer, offer multiple. You'll be surprised at what people will throw money at. If it, even if it's something that you wouldn't buy. I wouldn't buy this. I'd be like, dude, one knife's enough, right? But there's people out there that will buy multiple. You don't believe me? Go look. They're sets. These, these throwing knives are sold in sets, okay? And so, uh, you know, it's something that, it, you know, that's the reality of it, right? So find, if it's something that you think that people buy multiple of or if you see it in a lot of sets, then create your own. Right, so same product, variation products, or products that are very similar, right? The same type of product. And then companion products are products that are gonna be used with one another. So think about a, uh, one of them that we've done, we did backpacks and we sold, a comp because these backpacks were, be were being sold to hikers, people that were going out on hikes and they wanted to carry a lot of stuff in their backpacks. Uh, because they were going on hikes, we decided to throw in water bladders so that they can have carried around water with them while they're on their hikes and they could uh, you know, stay hydrated. And so you know, that's what I mean by you're focusing on the, the customer side of things. 
on the use, on how they're using that product, what it is that they're doing. How could you appeal to that? How could you appeal to that core desire? So for us, in the example of the water bladder with the backpack, well, the core desire was they're out there hiking. They wanted to spend more time hiking. They wanted to be out there on their adventure. That's why they packed their backpack full of stuff. And if they wanted to be out there all, all day on their adventure with a backpack full of stuff, well, don't they want to stay hydrate, hydrated? Well, here's a, a hydration water bladder, right? Just makes sense. Okay, but those are companion products and they rely a little bit on understanding the customer and what the customer is doing with the product. Okay, and then the next one we're gonna talk about is interest products. An interest product is a product the best way to, to think about it is it's, it's the type of product where the per, the, a person who is interested in the original product, the front end product, is highly likely, highly likely to be interested in the second product. It's that simple, right? Again, it deals with the prospect. Again, it deals with the customer. The first two, the same type of product and the variation products, that deals with the um, the, the, the product side of things, it deal, you know, you don't really have to think about the psychology of the customer. But dealing with the interest, you really got to think about the customer. You got to think, really think about who it is that is actually uh, buying from you, who it is that's going through your sales process, who's seeing your ad, who's landing on the sales page, who's going through the cart, who's going through the checkout. Who is this person? What is their avatar? Right? <clears throat> so uh, when I set this up, the person that I was thinking of for this uh, throwing knife, a, a green military color throwing knife. I, I felt somebody that was into military green and they were outdoors and they liked camouflage. And so, you know, I must have sent this up, set this up in the in the uh, cooler seasons because we were offering a jacket. And you know, if if a person was out in the woods and they were throwing this knife at a tree out in the woods, isn't it likely that in the winter they're going to want to stay warm and they're going to want to stay in something warm and green and camouflage because that's who the person is that bought the original product. Right? So this is an interest product. It's whatever the person that would be interested in who bought the first product, who, who bought the front end product or is buying, thinking about buying the front end product. What other products would they be interested in? Okay. Different than a, a companion product. Companion product, the, the knife goes inside of the sheath. The bladder goes inside of the backpack, right? An interest product, the person that would be interested in this would also be interested in this, right? But again, you have to know who your avatar is. You have to know who your audience is, who it is that you're selling to. And typically we know who we're selling to because we're running ads, we're, we're targeting the people. We're, we're specifically targeting a certain type of people so it's easy to know who your person is so all you have to do is find out what other type of products they'd be interested in it's not very hard okay I'll, I'll probably try to show you guys here in a little bit um, what an, an easy way actually I'll just go ahead and show you now I'm pulling it up in another window how to find products that are interest type products or products that people are most likely to buy with the original product, right? So say we're on amazon.com and we're looking for, um, I don't know, what, what type of products should we have, you guys? You guys throw something out. Throw out some products, just throw out some name of some products and we're, we're gonna do something with them in a little bit anyways. Um, but for now, let, start with um, these just pick these because they're here these are wireless headphones in-ear headphones or earbuds I guess and what we want to know is what else people are buying with this well, all you got to do is scroll down and find right here frequently bought together right now Amazon right here for this particular product the, the product that is most purchased with it. Do you guys want to guess what that is? Can you guys see this? 
these are the uh, these are the foam tips that go over. These are foam tips that go over the uh, that go on, on the earbuds. Do you know what type of offer that is? They're foam tips that would go onto these. For, based on what we've went over a little bit ago, what type of offer? If if these were going to be the upsell, if you're going to offer these foam tips, would it be a same product offer? A variation product offer? A companion product offer? Or an interest product offer? It's one of those. We have one more to go over, but it's one of those. Okay? It is a um, companion product. It's a perfect example of a companion product. The, the foam tips that would go over the earbuds offer um, another uh, solution or another way of using this product or are used with using this product and that's how companion products work. Okay, so, um, but you could also see other things down here. You could see customers who bought this item also bought, right? More of these, they also bought different types of headphones, um, they also bought batteries for their phone they also bought um, this other type of headphones as well so other people are buying other types so, so as people are coming to amazon and they're buying these these earbuds right here they're also buying different types of earbuds which are variation products right they're buying var variations different types of headphones and they're also buying these foam tips over here which are companion products Okay, but they're also buying these iPhone 7 Plus battery case. They're buying these battery cases that clip onto the back of your iPhone and keep it charged, which is a, well, actually that, that could be a companion product as well, um, but I wouldn't classify it as a companion product because while you're using your headphones, you do wanna keep your phone charged. So it can be classified as a companion product. Um, however, typically companion products are used directly with the original product. So what I would, uh, but there is some overlap there. Remember, there is some overlap here. So, so uh, for this battery, as a, this battery for the iPhone, as an upsell for the headphones, it it would be a companion product, but it would also be an interest product because people that are inter in interested in buying these cool techie headphones or earbuds would be interested in keeping their phone charged because they're always burning the battery. Okay, so uh, there's a little bit of overlap there for both of them, but that's how you're gonna find, a lot of times you'll find, it's just the example that we picked, these, these uh, earbuds right here, um, but a lot of times you'll find products that are um, interest products. Let's see if we can find one. I'll, I'll spend a little bit more time trying to find one. Um, let's just pick, let's pick this thing right here. It's a desk donut push pin holders. You put the pins into it. Looks like it's got little sprinkles. That's kind of cool. It's cool. That's a cool little unique product for for uh, for um, people in offices, and it's easy to target. You know, they they work in an office and they like donuts, right? So um, that's cool. So let's say we're selling that product and we needed an upsell with it. Let's see what this most frequently bought together is. It's a kitty cat sticker post-it bookmarks so they so they like um, okay so that makes sense so they're little little post-its that are shaped like kitty cats that are they're uh, stickums you know the little stickum yellow notepad sticker stickers well it's those these little it's like these but they're shaped as a kitty cat so let's let's de decide something about the person now we're getting we're overlapping with demographic which I haven't gone over here yet um, but it still is along the line of interest product. The person who is buying this, who is into cute little office desk, unique, cool things like that, is going to be interested in cute little office things, cool things like that, like the little kitty cat ones, right? So it's kind of a interest type of product. Same thing for these ones down here. These are a lot of interest. Now there is overlap with demographic, but these are interest type products. They're cute office supplies. That's the interest, cute office supplies. Okay, 
So that's interest product. It's a product where the, per the person who's interested in the front, front end product, they're highly likely to be interested in the upsell product or the second, second offer. Make sense, you guys? I think you guys got that one. And then let's go on into uh, the demographic. I mentioned it a minute ago, or I've mentioned all of these a bunch of times, but uh, there is some overlap. A lot of times there's a lot of overlap between demographic, a demographic product offer and a interest product offer. So for this one, I was thinking more of a hands-on, rugged, get stuff done type of male person. A male, um, a male who is hands-on, get stuff t done type of person, right? Aggressively. That's the type of person that I was interested in. That was the demographic. That was the avatar. Demographic covers a lot of different things. Um, there's also some, over, there, there's some behavior. Maybe I could even add that in here now. Um, if I could type it. Demographic behaviors. Um, there's a little bit of overlap between those, but but I, I try to keep it. Um, I want to keep it under one because it's they're kind of the same the way I'm using them. So think of what the the. So a person who would be buying this knife and we're offering them an interest product, we're considering what that person is using it for and who that person is. And it's distinctly different from the demographic type of offer where we're thinking about simply who that person is. It has nothing to do with the product. It has to do with the person. This one kind of has to do with the product. You're thinking of, okay, well, they're buying this product. What else would they buy? What else would this person be interested in? And so you're, you're thinking about the product and you're thinking about the person. Remember up here, you're thinking about the product only. Right here, you're thinking about the, only the product. Right here, you begin thinking about the person and the product, how they're using that product. Right here, you're thinking about the person and the product. Right here, you're really only concerned about the person, right? So there, there's distinctions between each one of these. And even though there's, there seems to be overlap and even though it seems like there's the kind of the same thing, there's distinction. And, and it's important that you understand that there's distinction because what that's gonna allow you to do is when you can't think of an upsell, when you can't think of another offer, some other product to offer your customer, you're gonna think, okay, well, there's these five type of offers. Which one of these can I find a product in? Is it a, is it a, a same product? Where can I, is it, can I offer them the same type of product? Is it a variation? Can I offer them some sort of variation? Is, can I find them a companion product? Can I find something that something else they'll be interested in? Or will this demographic buy something else? And so by demographic, uh, you know, a clear one where it works most often and I've had a lot of success with uh, these types of offers with is with parents. Parenting is a demographic, so you're, you know, you're selling a product, um, but maybe you're going specifically after um, you know, parents who are, you're selling bibs as your front end offer, a baby bib, right? You're selling a baby bib, that's your front end offer. And because you know that the person who is buying it is, is female, because you're targeting her, she's a female and she's a mom, she's a mom of a newborn because she's, you know, she's buying bibs, you know that she's a new parent. She might be an old parent too. She might be, you know, she might've been a parent for a while, but you know that she's a new parent and she's starting this journey all over again of parenting. And so a product that you could sell with the baby bib could be, if you're going for a demographic product, could be a book on parenting, right? So it's not an interest type of product, right? The interest type of product would be, would be baby bibs, might be like, baby bottles or something like that, which also would be kind of an overlap with a companion product. But a demographic product is based on who that person is and solely only on who that person is, right? So they're starting their new journey as a parent, they're buying the baby bibs as a new, as a new parent, starting their new journey. Let's give them a book, let's offer them a book on parenting and the new journey of parenting or whatever, right? 
just as just an example you guys could do whatever it is you want with your offers don't do exactly what i say i want you to just think about what it is i'm saying and apply it to your own campaigns whatever it is that you have going so whoever was buying this knife the 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 hands-on mel that took action and got shit done with his hands who was buying this knife because that's who we were targeting is the hands-on mel that gets shit done around the house or doesn't get stuff done around the house depends on who you're asked if you're asking the wife or the husband um, but they're gonna buy that tool right they're gonna buy that tool or they might it depends okay but that's just another type of offer the demographic type of offer they're the hardest ones to dial in as an upsell or as a bundle they're the hardest ones to dial in but when you dial them in they make you the most amount of money usually because demographic type offers or demographic demographic um, promotions in general have a broad audience so like the parenting example it's a very very broad audience right and so you can make a lot more money from them they're just a lot harder to dial in and so um you know take a lot more work Does that make sense you guys you guys like that good so far Someone asked, uh, Mike asked, is it important to keep price close to the main product on this one? Um, I have another, another uh, whole other training I go over on that, on, on adding value. There's a bunch of different things we talk about when we're talking about adding value. This is just different types of promotions. Um, when we start talking about pricing and things like that, um, it's, it's really hard to talk about those because even when you're buying your products from AliExpress, something or wherever you're buying them from, uh, sometimes you're going to have, you know, a 10% margin and sometimes you're going to have a 200% margin. And so for that reason, for, for, for the reason why you, it, the, the prices that we pay are so fluctuate, they fluctuate so much, I don't like to have any standards or lay out any rules anymore on, on upsells or anything like that. Okay, because sometimes you can make a lot, like, yeah, just, it, it's hard to, uh, you'll see what I'm saying when you're actually play, laying that out. Um, you might already see it and that might be why you're asking that question um, but uh, so I mean like this example right here you know the, the upsell you're offering them it's twice as much right um, but per product it's less right here it could be about the same you know um, it looks like I, I don't know what my initial intention was when I went from 9 to 19 I don't know if I was offering this at $19 or if I was offering them both at $19 I'm not sure um, but here from nine to four ninety nine, obviously if you get something that's of less value, I noticed that four ninety nine, five ninety nine, those those convert really really well. They convert extremely well, and you can find a lot of products on AliExpress for a dollar, a dollar fifty. And if you mark it up to four ninety nine, five five bucks somewhere around there, you're making a few few extra dollars off of every purchase, or well, almost every purchase because a lot of people are gonna like it. So the 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 inexpensive, the very cheap upsells, they they act they convert the best. In my opinion, in my experience, when I when and um, you know just most generally speaking, okay. So price um, price does play a role in the sense that you don't want to get too expensive on your upsells, especially on Shopify, on ClickFunnels, or or some other platform. You could get you could get a little bit more uh, technical on your, or you could you know have a you could have a really high end upsell on ClickFunnels because you're you're getting them to purchase before they're actually being offered the upsell. On Shopify, you, you can't really do that unless you're paying a lot through uh, for Shopify Plus and you know, a bunch of other stuff. Um, actually, there's some apps out there, but I'm not very fam much familiar with them. Um, that's a little sidetracked though. So, so going back to the original question, does price really, does price really play a role in this? Um, you just wanna keep it down under the impulse price which is around $39 getting people to spend impulsively over $40 is, is pretty hard it's pretty difficult so you want to keep it under that if you can but again that's just generally speaking okay and then somebody says I think the strategies won't work on free plus shipping right he says I don't think this will work on free plus shipping no this is exactly what you'll do on free plus shipping exactly every single one of these I'll show you exactly how okay so imagine you're giving away one knife for free but now, but you're offering them three for $10 or $19 or $15. And when they buy three for $15, they're still getting one extra for free. So they're actually getting four for $15 or whatever, right? So on a free plus shipping offer, the, the, the hook, the lead in, 
or trip offer, trip wire offer, whatever you want to call it, that front end offer, that first pro that first offer is going to be the the free free item. Just pay six ninety nine shipping, right? Get this knife free. Just pay shipping. Say it on the product page. Get just you can get this free. Just pay shipping, or get three for nineteen dollars and still get this one for free. They're gonna pay shipping anyways. You might as well just buy them, right? So yeah, you could use this. You could use this one for a free plus shipping offer to get more money. It's exactly what you should be doing. Same thing for this one, right? They're interested in this knife. They're coming for nine. They're going to buy it for nine ninety nine. They're going to go to cart and you're going to offer them this knife because you know they're into knives and, and so you're going to show them this other knife and they're going to buy it or they're not. But they're you know if they're interested in it, if you're showing them a variation product, you know maybe they're they're looking at a. Um, Maybe you're, they're looking at a, a, a t-shirt, right? They're going to buy a t-shirt, but we're going into summer now, so buy the tank top as well, right? Actually, we're, to, we're, to, we're talking about free plus shipping. I've seen free plus shipping on t-shirts. For, they do them for, for $9.99, uh, but you got to print them yourself. But um, whatever the item is, you, you're offering them the item for free, this knife for free, or whatever the front-end offer is for free, and then offer them a variation product. I'm trying to think of one that, uh, of a free offer, um, a print-on-demand one. I think we did it with um, we did it with some mugs. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways you could do it with variations, uh, companion products. So you're getting the the necklace now. Buy the bracelet. Getting the getting the necklace for free. Buy the bracelet or getting the pendant. Buy the necklace. Right. What, you know, whatever the front end offer is for free, now just get the secondary offer, right? You guys could see I could do this with every, I could do this with free plus shipping. That's exactly what I would do with free plus shipping. This is how you increase how much money you make, right? So, so a lot of what we've been going over in this group so far have, has been the elementary stuff about just getting your first sell, just get, you know, uh, how to get your 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 campaigns dialed in, how to get your products dialed in, and things like that. But this is how you actually increase how much money you actually make. Now, now this is step, step two, after you're getting your first sell. After, you've, after I've already been selling this knife and I might have got my, you know, my first five sales and it looks like I'm profitable, then I'm going to offer some other offer with it, right? This is exactly what I do when, I for, when I'm starting off and I'm finding my, I got my first sales, now I'm stacking more value on it. So yes, this is exactly what you would do on a free plus shipping offer. And not just free, free plus shipping offers, this is on anything. Right? Yeah, Anita, you're right. You can't advertise knives on, on Facebook. I, I, I don't really, um, when I put these slides together, I don't do it for the intention that you guys are going to go sell the item. I do it with the intention of this is what I have on hand or what I have in my mind when I'm, when I'm putting it together. So, um, you know, you can't do this with knives, uh, but you can do this with everything else. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Um, so five different types of offers. There's a lot more. I want you guys to use these to just get started, just to get your, your wheels turning, your, your brain thinking about the different types of offers. But there are a lot more that you could come up with on your own. There's a lot more that I use. These are just the five go-to ones that I go to all the time. Same product, variation product, companion product, interest product, and demographic product. Okay, and if you can't find a upsell, if you don't know what to sell as an upsell, you could go to Amazon and look for some things here. Um, but if you just need some ideas to start with, then just think, okay, is there a same type of product that I could sell? Can I, can I offer them more of them? Is it a product that I could offer them another one of the same type of thing? Is it a product that I could offer them something to go with it? Is it a product that I could, uh, the person would use this and something else? Is it a product that, um, that the person in the demographic that would be buying their original product is going to buy or is going to need based on their demographic, right? Just think about that. Ask yourself those questions, and if you could think about if you could think about a product, if you could if you could think about those things, and try to identify different types of products, then you will never need to go to Amazon to look for upsells, or you won't need to use any type of tool to to find upsells because because you, you'll be able to think of them on your own. And that's really what this is about, is helping you discover um, or giving you a blueprint to be able to find what's out there. Okay, so now let's talk about how to set these up on Shopify. How can we set up some of these offers? I'm going to open up one of my stores over here.
one of the stores I like to use for example and show you how to do this so variants as upsells we're gonna do variants as upsells let me bring this over here and let's say we were selling these incense first I want to show you the store um, well, maybe not show you the whole store. Let's just look at some of the products. Pull them up so I could kind of show you some contrasting offers or different types of offers, I guess. Okay, so um, if we were looking to set up a same product type of offer, you're coming to get this knife, for free or for ten dollars or whatever the front end offer is, or they're coming to get this knife and now you want to offer them more. You're gonna find out. You want to find a product that this type of offer would work with. It would probably not work with this camera. It may. It, it, it may if there was some like say there was some demographic layer there. Say say you were you were selling this uh, this camera to uh, parents so that they could have a cheap camera for their kids. You know they're forty nine dollars, you know, and they're buying it for their kid. Well, now it's now you can layer in a demographic type of offer with that. But typically, people that are buying this camera, they're buying it from the sell they're, themselves, and so they're not going to want twenty five of them. They're not going to want two of them even. They're just going to be happy with one of them, right? So it's not the typical type of offer that we can offer multiple of that same type of product with, versus these incense cones right these incense people that are burning these incense and they're, and they're gonna come here and they're gonna get 25 for free they're here for a reason they use these they want they're like 25 for free heck yeah I'll, I'll try out these 12 cents the 12 different types of cents so what we can offer is more of the same type of product you're getting 25 for free. Well, how about get 500 or 100 or whatever for so many dollars for, for uh, $2 or $3 or $5 or whatever. I don't know what the price point is on these, but why don't, why don't you just get 500 of them for, for $5 and you'll never need them again, right? So this is an offer we could offer more of or a type of product we could offer more of, which is what we'll do here in a little bit. This baby cover is a product that people would only buy one of so we would only do um, well let's let's try to figure out each one of these types of offers we have the same product offer um, so so this incense would work for a same product offer people would buy multiple of the, those versus just about anything else on here anything else on this page they're only gonna buy one of typically right so that one we could do the same pro product variation products let's look at that one if we we're trying to uh, sell a variation of the original product um, we can so there's variants for some of these but it doesn't mean it's a product that we're gonna want to sell a variant of right so like this camera they could buy it in red they could buy it in blue but it doesn't mean we want to offer them red and blue we just because we've just determined that it's probably only gonna buy one of them but a variant product like a um, so like maybe this 50 shades of gray, I guess it's supposed to allude to necklace. A variant to that might be the earrings, right? So you could do a variant product with that. Same thing with the neck, this necklace down here, the cats. Any, any necklace, any jewelry you can kind of do this with, offering variant, variant products with it. Okay, uh, companion products. What's a companion product that we have on this page? Um, I don't see any companion products on this page, but we do have one. Let's see if we could show more products. Let's um, incent. I don't know if it's in, incense. I don't know if I was going to do. I don't know what I'm going to find. There's another. There's other products on here. Okay, so I do have incense. Okay, or incense. I didn't know how I spelt it. So if this was our front end offer. The companion product would be 
the incense that go with it. Right? You guys could see that. The, you have the same product. It's not the same product. It's not a variant product. It's a companion product. It's not an interest product. All those overlap in some of the other ones, you know, maybe in a demographic and, and interest in all the others or a few of the others. It's a companion product. It's, if you're going to buy the first one, if, you, if you're going to buy this and you're going to be burning your incense on it, you're going to need some incense. Here's another offer. Get 25. Well, in this case, they get 25 for free. That's how I stack the value. Right? So that's companion product. Interest product. Let's see if we can find an interest product type of product on this store. Um, right here, American Woman Watch. Maybe you could sell a bandana with it, like an American flag bandana, because it's an interest. Right? The American flag. Patriotic. Right? So that could be a interest product or a product that you could find an interest upsell to and the one that I said a minute ago would be like a bandana or it could be um, you know maybe a t-shirt or something like that and then a demographic product a demographic product would be a product that the same person would use and so like maybe this baby carrier cover um, you know, the mom that's going out using this baby carrier cover um, is, you know, she's going out a lot in the outside. She's either going outdoors or she's on the go a lot. And so you're now thinking of a mom that's on the go. Uh, but what can you offer a mom that's on the go? Well, and, and that has a baby. Well, there's a lot of different things you can. I can't think of any right now. But uh, if, if you ask the mom that had a baby or that was on the go that had a newborn baby, she would tell you all kinds of things that would help her in her life, right? And you could find those, um, you could find a bunch of different products simply by knowing that that's what it is that you're going after, right? A demo demographic type of product, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? So we've just looked for different ones on this store. We just looked at a few. Let's actually set up one, um, actually set up a few with the three different types. So let's say we were giving them these incense for free. They get 20 fr 25 free incense. And now we want to um, offer them something else. We'll do a few different types of offers on here. Let's add some variants. That's, that's what I have here. The first way to set up these, um, an upsell or a bundle is using variants on Shopify. And so let's do that here with this one. Let's go down and find the spot where it says add variant and you're gonna change the option name. We're just gonna change that to option. And then we're gonna put 25 free. Option two is gonna be 100 pack. And then we'll put plus 25 free. And then the next one will be 500 pack. Plus 25 free. Right? And so what we've done is we just added more. We're just offered them more of what it was that they were already buying. So the 100 pack we might do for like $9. The 500 pack we might do for so 500 times 100. You would think 5. So 5 times 9 is 45. So let's just say 39. They save some money by buying 500. Right? If you really want to make a compelling offer, do it for 29, right? Hit save, look at it on your store, and guess what you have? You have now offers that you didn't have before that give your customers a way to get more value from your promotions, but also for you to make more money. So right there, it just says option. You can actually kind of, you can actually change that. Um, edit options, I, I, I like to put, choose an option so that because right there it says option doesn't tell them really what to do so I like to give them a call to action choose an option so they choose an option because it's not as clear if you're not if you don't make it clear it's not clear you want to make it as clear as you can you want to make you want to pretend every one of your customers is is uh, is needs everything 
needs everything explained to them very, very clearly, okay? Um, you know, just as a child would. Not assuming that they're childish or they're children or they're stupid or anything like that. It's just assuming that you're dealing with a massive amount of people and everybody thinks differently and so you want to make things very, very clear. And so uh, to give them an op or when you're giving them options to choose variants, you want to tell them, choose an option or choose a color or choose your size. Or a lot of people won't and they're going to email your customer service and says, I got, I got the wrong size, right? Or color or whatever, okay? Or in this case, they won't even know that they could be offered more. They don't know about the value that's there. You only told them about the free offer. They've seen that in their news feed. They've seen the free offer that they're getting offered this free product. And they were like, heck yeah, I'll take it for free. They come over to your product page and they didn't know that they could get a 100 pack and still get the 25 for free. Or they get a 500 pack and still get the 25 for free and, and save money. Right? They didn't know that that was available. So you want to make that available. You want to uh, let them know that it's available. Okay, and that's the first way you can add upsells. It's the simplest way, it's the easiest way to add upsells or to add bundles. You notice that I, uh, I did something, uh, actually I didn't do it, let's do it here. Let's go back and do it. Um, you could also, right inside of here, you can choose, let's add another variant. Let's add 100, 100 um, Frankincense. I don't know if I'm spelling this right. I'm just gonna rely on on um, my computer because my computer is smarter than me. Plus twenty five free. Right now, save that. So now what I did is. I'm actually giving them a, so, so these two are, are um, similar product offers. You're offering them similar. They were getting 25 random uh, of 12 different cents. They're getting a 25 pack of them. Now they're getting 100 of them, but it's still going to be the 12 cents. But now you're dialing in on a, remember the offers up here? You're dialing in on a variation product, right? You're giving them a variation product. But it's also overlap with the same product. They're still incense, but they're just a different type of incense, right? And you're giving them a certain specific type. And if you go down, if you if you have 12 different scents and you offer a, offer them all 12 different scents and a 100 pack of 12 different scents, well, what you've done is you've used both of these types of offers. You've, you've used the same product offer and you've used a variation type offer in, in one offer because you're offering a lot more of the same thing and you're offering them a variation of that or a specific variation of that. You've layered your your uh, you've layered your your um, types of products or your your value offer, and you've made it more compelling to purchase, right? But you wouldn't leave it at nine dollars. You'd put it at the or at zero dollars. You put it at the nine dollars or whatever it was, four hundred, right? Makes sense, you guys. So that is how you would do it. That's exactly how you would do it. You might not have, see you, what I would do is, I would either have one or the other. I would have, uh, offer a 100 pack and a 500 pack and just leave it at that. You know, so these top three. Or I would not have the 100 pack and 500 pack. I would have a 100 pack of the 12 different options as variations. So they could buy a 100 of the frankincense, they could buy a 100 of the whatever, all of the other, tw I'm not into that niche, so I don't even know what they are. Um, cinnamon and cap. Uh, I don't know, you could have all I mean, you could have anything. So um, you could just create your long list. But the front end offer is 25 free. Remember, it's, we, we could call this a free plus shipping offer. That's what this is. They're, they're coming to the offer to get 25 for free, but you know they like it. You know they're into this. If they're buying, the, if they're getting, they're claiming the 25 for free, they're into this niche. And if they're into this niche, then you might as well offer them more of that same product. If, and you could do it by offering them the same product or a variation of that same product. Okay, guys, make sense? Mike says, good wisdom right here. Yes, this is, uh, this is very, very powerful stuff. And that was very, very simple. That's a simple way of adding more value to your campaigns is by using the, vari the variant options right inside of Shopify when you're setting up the product. Another way you could do this is you could, you could create separate products and lead them to a bundle in the description. Okay, so let me think about, um, let's go back to the home of the store. 
And let's see how we can do this real quick without having to set more products up. So we're going to do separate products to a bundle in the descriptions. Separate products to bundles in the descriptions. Hmm. I wonder what else I have on this store that I could do that with. We could just grab some random products, I guess. Let's just do that. Keep it simple. Um, we'll start with incense. And we have this product. And let's say we didn't, they weren't getting those for free. Let's just say they were just buying that as is. There was no incense included for free. But they're going to get free shipping. Okay. And then let's go back to... Look, I misspelled it there. That's why it's not showing up. Let's go back here. They're going to get um, 12 cents to choose. I don't know. I'm just naming it for so it makes sense to us. 12 cents to choose. And cents, whatever. And then let's get rid of this one. And actually, let's get rid of both. Get rid of these ones. Get rid of these ones. I'm going to show you guys this uh, an offer. What we're going to do is we have, uh, and then add a variant. Um, actually, we don't need variants here. So what we want to do is we want to have a bundle where, or we want to have two separate offers, two separate products that they could buy option product A or they could buy option product B, or they could buy option product C, which is product A and B together. Okay, so they could buy A by itself, they could buy B by itself, or they could buy A and B together in product C. So right now we have product A, which is the, uh, I think I changed the spelling on it, so I think it'll show up now. We have product A, which is the, no, the other one's not. Um, which is the 12 incense. Did I not save it? Oh, 12 incense to choose from. Okay, I see what's going on here. I'm confusing myself with this. Okay, so we have these two products. We have the burner. We have the, the incense. And now we need, so that's product A and product B. So they could get 12 in incense, choose from 12 different incense. Choose, just imagine that there's 12 different sense here that they're getting to choose from. We only have one, but just imagine that there is. This is the product that we're leading into. Buy all these incense. Buy a, a hundred pack of incense. Choose the choose the uh, scent that you want. Buy it now. Nine dollars. That's one offer. It's product A offer. Product offer B is get the little monk backflow burner. Incense burner. That's product B is the burner. Product C is going to be the little bunk, the little monk burner, and plus one hundred free incense. I can't. I could. I could barely type as it is. So talking and typing at the same time is even harder. So one hundred incense. We're not, we're not going to do free. So, so you get get the monk by itself for thirty nine dollars. They could get the a hundred incense for nine dollars, or they could get the monk and the hundred incense for how much was the monk? Thirty nine, and that was nine. So that'd be forty eight dollars if they were going to buy them together. So what we're going to do is give them to them for a good deal of not forty eight dollars. We'll we'll just give it to them for thirty nine. No. Um, $42. $42. So they could get the, the incense burner by itself for $39, or the incense for $9, or they could get them both 
for $42. That means they're saving $7. Eight, uh, six, what is that? $6? What is that? 43 to 48 So $5. Ish. Can't do math either. <laughs> okay, so they have option A, which is the burner. Option B is the incense. And option C now is both of them for $42. Right, and then we'd fix up this bundle page. We'd fix it up with more images, images of the incense. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'll just do that for, for illustration purposes. I'll just show you that. So now we got the images there. Um, includes, you'll do something like um, includes burner 100 incense. Something like that. So that's option C, that's product C. Okay, so now you got your three products. You have separate products that are gonna lead to the bundle. So you have the monk that they could buy, it to, buy by itself. So maybe you're, you have ads for the monk, right? And they're going to the monk page. And then you have ads to the incense that they could buy from, for themselves or, or by themselves. And so you have ads going to that by itself. But what you're going to do is you're going to link both of those from both of these product pages are going to link over to the bundle page. So that they could get the bundle. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab that URL right there, copy it. You're going to go over to your products and you're going to find your incense and you're going to, you're going to put in the description. Get the bundle today and save big. And you could either link just like that. You could just highlight that and click this link button right here and put the link in there. And I like to go to a new window and then hit insert link. And they could either just click that or what you could do is you could actually go over to, you could take the, the image and you can, um, actually let me just, copy image address and then you could go over here to uh, add in an image and then you could do it from URL and you could put the URL in there hit the image and now you could have that there and then oops you want to link to it though or link it and then you could um, go back to the set grab that link put it back over here new window so now what happens is when people are on the incense page so you're driving traffic to the incense page that's what they see in your ads for. They're coming here. They're happy about that. They see now that they could get the bundle and say big. That's clickable. Or they could see this and they click it and it opens up and takes them to the bundle offer. Right? So you offer that upsell right on the product description. And you're going to do that same thing on both products. And so I just copy that. Control C. Well, actually, you don't want to copy the whole description if you have more in there. But in this case, we only had that. So we just grab that description. And we go over to the other product, which is just the monk by itself. Let's find that. Um, I think this is the one where, no, that's the bundle. You open the monk and you put in the description there. And now you link, you have it linked over to the bundle too as well, right? So refresh it now get the bundle today and say big. Again, when they click it, it goes over to the bundle page. They see they get 100 incense uh, and it's only a couple dollars more, right? So what you do is you drive them to the front end product, but you offer them a bundle of some other, of some other sort of product that you have and you do it with links in the description. Make sense? Someone was saying, was trying to make sense of this all day today, and now it's explained. Good. Yeah, much much easier than using an upsell app. Both of the options that I just showed you are free and a lot easier than using an upsell app. Both of the options I just showed you, the the choosing uh, the, the using variants as upsells and using separate product bundle in the descriptions, just linking to them in the descriptions. They're both easier. Does one convert better than the other? I, I, I haven't tested it enough. I, 
honestly have not tested enough and I don't know that anybody has tested it enough to be honest uh, to really determine which one works better. I just say that this is the one that I prefer um, for, for bundles like this, for bundles. Okay, there are upsell apps or bundle apps out there that are uh, highly technical. Somebody mentioned earlier that there's there's um, that you're using a, a bundle app and it was just all code that's all that messes you up. Yeah, that's exactly what happens with the bundle. A lot of the bundle apps that are out there. This is easy, super super easy, right? Okay, so um, cool. I'm seeing. I'm glad I'm seeing mind blown on the webinar because. I was hoping that somebody's mind would be blown for the, with this stuff. It, it seems super simple. It really does. And, and you know, one of the very first events I've done on, on Shopify, in, in, in Shopify, we did an event a couple years ago and I, I wore a shirt and people are still reminding me of it. I, the whole talk was about keep it simple. Keep it simple, right? And I, 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 that's what my shirt wore, said, keep it simple. And um, people remind me of it every day that, wow, this is way easier than I thought. It's way easier. And if it's complicated to you, well, then we've made it too complicated on our own. We've done it in our own minds. Okay? Um, and I'm not talking about the technical stuff. There is some te you know, technical stuff that's difficult. But I'm just talking about just overall the, the sales stuff and getting stuff done. It should be pretty simple. It's not that hard. Okay? And so um, two simple ways to get products set up were the variant upsells or through variants, the use of variants. And then the second way was, is through uh, separate products and linking to those in the descriptions. Okay? And then um, somebody asks, what happens? I want to answer that, this question. I want to answer some of these concerns because sometimes these concerns keep people from actually doing anything. Um, so so the, the question is, is what happens at checkout? Do all of the products show up or add it manually? Well, this is what happens. They're over here on um, this incense page. Now, they can add this to cart or they can grab the bundle. If they add it to cart, they're taken to the cart page. Right, this unicorn was there from another time, but they were taking the cart page. That's all that's there. If they don't add it to cart, well, let's let's um, let's remove it. Okay, now the cart's empty. So if they don't add it to cart, if they choose to add to go to the bundle, they'll have both pages open because we linked, we had it open up in a new window. So they have both pages open. They're comparing. They're like, okay, this is nine dollars, but I could get that for forty-two dollars. That means I'm paying. Uh, 20 or 30 33 dollars for this 34 dollars for this and so you know they're working out the math in their head they're like okay i'd rather have this add to cart sometimes i like to not always but sometimes i like to um and, and you can see there's only the one product in the cart sometimes i like to add in the description on the bundle get them individually so you could do that as well i didn't do that in this example it's that's not the important part the important part is is um that you link them to the upsell, to the bundle. When I do that the most, just thinking back, when I do that the most, when I, when I link in the bundle back to the individual products, it's when I don't open in a new window. And I go back and forth on opening in a new window because some browsers, you know, depend on the person's setting, settings, new windows won't open when they click it. So that's something for you to play with on your own stores. I'm just showing you the strategies and you have to test them out on your own. Okay. So variants as upsells, separate products as upsells to a bundle, and then you can use some apps. And there's a bunch of apps out there. Uh, a friend of mine, Devin, who I, might be in this group, I'm not sure. Um, he has smart apps, which is S-M-A-R and a letter seven, or the number seven that replaces the letter, the letter T. Um, there's also bold upsells apps, the product upsell apps. That's the one I'm gonna show you, demonstrate for you. And then um, those are just the two that I'm familiar with most for upsells. Um, but uh, th I'm sure there's a lot more out there that you guys know of as well. So, and then I, I don't know if Chris recommends any from in this group. I, I don't know if you guys even talked about upsell apps yet. So, um, you know, if there's others that are talked about in the group, or if you guys have heard of others, then I, yeah, I recommend them as well. You know, as long as they work. Uh, so let's go over here to, I have, oops, yeah, apps. I have uh, product upsell by bold apps. I have it installed on this store. And when you, oops, when you um, open the app, this one set, is easy to set up and it's easy to work. I can actually show you how it works by 
Um, I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you as long as it's set up. I don't remember. So it should work where I add this to cart. I'm on cart. I go to checkout. Okay, it's not working here. So maybe it's not set up. Um, I'll, I'll show you one that I have set up real quick. Um, oh, it's the incense. It was the other way around. Okay, so when, we, when they add the incense to cart, when they add the incense to cart, they're gonna get offered the monk. Now that only works because we were targeting people that were into Buddha type stuff. Um, actually, did I click on the wrong one? Yeah. Okay, so supposedly when I add this to cart, something's supposed to happen and it's not. So let, let's just set it up and then, uh, and then it'll, it should work because something must be up, up with this. Um, I'm just gonna delete both of these. I don't even use this store, it's just for demonstration purposes. Uh, let's create a new offer and let's create the offer, um, the, the, those incense. Let's go through and, and set it up. So what we wanna do is um, choose display, off, display offer to customers when clicking the checkout button. Now you don't have to use bold, bold upsells. There's a bunch of different apps I'm just showing you. They're all gonna be kind of the same on the options. So I'm just gonna kind of show you how they work on the back end, and you guys choose the one that, that you like, okay? So uh, display offer to customer when, when clicking the checkout button. So remember over here on cart, there's the checkout button. So display the pop-up then, or display the offer to the customer when adding the product to cart. So that means when they're over here on this page and they add it to cart, it's gonna come up. Or display the offer automatically added to cart on cart load. Okay, so I think this one shows on the cart page and this one shows on the product page, if I remember correctly. I'm not 100% sure. I always use, um, well actually I go through these two. So this one shows on the cart page. When, when a customer clicks add the cart on the product page, the offer appears. It, we don't always recommend this as too many pop-ups can annoy customers. Okay, so you could choose one or the other. Let's just show the checkout button one for now. Um, you know what, it might not be working because I might not have the code installed on this theme. That might be what's going on with it. So let's just do the checkout button one. We'll go um, internal use. This is what you wanna name it just so that you can remember what it is. We're gonna call it incense to burner. And the offer title is, is wait. Need a place to burn these? Need, um, Hmm. I don't know. Need a, we're just gonna keep it simple, so I don't waste time trying to think of stuff. Need a burner, right? You'll you'll relate it. You'll you'll have a call to action or a um, a title or a headline here, uh, something that you're gonna relate to the customer with. You're gonna have something that's more enticing, um, but you want to relate to the customer. Wait, need a burner, and then a description. Grab this Buddha burner today and burn in peace. I don't know, I have no clue. Um, but that's just, just to fill in space, that's what we, I'm putting there. And then the products, this is select the product that will get offered in the pop-up. So what we're gonna offer, the products that we wanna find are, um, so we're offering them the burner, so we, we wanna find the burner. Oops, is that it? So I add it there, so that's the product. And you can choose several different products or you could choose collections or whatever in this app anyways that you want the upsell to show up on or to show, I think you could choose up to four products. Um, so this is the product that you're offering and it says allow customers to add more than one to cart. Um, I it just depends on what it is you're, you're offering. I'm actually, I'm not even gonna go through all these. I'm not gonna go through all the settings. I'm just gonna get it set up. I just wanted to show you uh, what these apps are like. So we chose the offer that we wanna offer, how many we wanna limit. We don't wanna limit anything. Um, we don't need a disclaimer or anything like that. Only make this offer available when a certain price range. No, we don't care about the price range. Only make this offer available between these dates. No, it's not that type of seller promotion. I mean, you can use those if you want. 
Um, but we, what I want to look for is offer this or trigger this offer if any of these products are already in the customer's cart, right? So if they have the incense in their cart and they enter the quantity of products needed in cart, so they only need one of them, if they only have one of these incense in their cart, then they're going to be offered the Buddha and then hide all products that are out of stock, whatever, that's, that's your choice. Okay, and so let's see if it works. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. Um, check out. Yep, there it goes. Click checkout, and boom, there it is. Wait, need a burner? Grab this Buddha burner today and burn in peace. And then it tells you, tells them what it is. They click add to cart, or they could click no thanks, or they could click checkout. And it's in the cart. It's telling us two incense because I've done that. I went through it multiple times, but but it's that simple. It's that simple. Like it, it like it added, it offered it to them based on what was there. And now that we have it in the cart, it's not offering it anymore. Remove it from the cart, refresh the page, check out, there it is again. Okay. So that is using apps. There's a bunch of apps out there that could do different stuff. I just wanted to show you one of them. That's how easy it is to set up. It wasn't that hard. I mean, I just, like, let me ask you guys a question. Was setting up that app, that's, that was the most difficult of the three that we went over, right? That was the most difficult of these three that we went over. But if all you did was sold them a $4.99 product when they're buying a $10.99 product and you made an extra $3, just an extra three, if all you did was make an extra $3, would it be worth it? Like, would it have been worth it to go through the effort to set up the app? For me, it is. The app costs what ten dollars a month, so so three, three purchases, four purchases, and now you've made your money back, and the, now everything else is profit. You can make a thousand dollars, get a thousand orders, get th get get three thousand dollars because you made three dollars per product or per, per order, right? And that was the that was the most difficult one. So we have variants that are really easy. We have setting up products, uh, or linking products to the bundle in the description is very easy. Um, but we have apps that we also seen that was very very easy, right? And those are the three ways to offer the five different types of promotions or, or um, product promotions that we talked about. And again, there's a lot more than five. You guys can come up with your own. Those are the five that I always talk about. This is the five that are my go-tos. Good stuff, guys. I can tell by the comments that uh, you guys you guys got some value out of this. So um, I appreciate you guys being here for this. Uh, it's always boring to talk to yourself so it's good to see people interacting and talking back i appreciate you guys i'm gonna go ahead and end this for now and um you guys take care have a good rest of your day and um comment telling that you're using these strategies post saying that you're using these strategies so that we know that you are all right you guys take care